because compared to light speed, we are moving very slowly. But when we crank up the velocity, things begin to change. As you get closer and closer to the speed of light, all sorts of strange and marvelous distortions take place. When we say that the universe kind of bends itself so that the speed of light is always constant, it's amazing how literally that's really true. As you move closer and closer to the speed of light, your time appears to slow down to an observer that's just sort of watching you go by. That's amazing. When Clifford Johnson bikes around the track, he needs to be going about 56 million times faster than his current 12 miles per hour to get close to light speed. But suppose he could. Imagine I'm riding my bike close to the speed of light. Never mind whether that's possible or not. Just imagine that this was happening. My clock's running slow compared to the cameraman on the ground who's filming me. If I do that for a while, I'm going to age much more slowly than the cameraman who's on the ground. So that when I come back from the trip and come back and talk to the cameraman, he's actually much older than when I left him. If this sounds like magic instead of science, there is proof in something that many of us experience every day. A great example of Einstein's special theory of relativity and the fact that clocks that are moving relative to you run more slowly than your own clock, which is at rest, is the GPS system. The global positioning system lets us drive our cars without getting lost. Turn right. GPS begins with a network of 24 satellites orbiting the Earth 12,500 miles above the surface. At any one time, the device in your car receives signals from at least four satellites and compares their light speed travel times to calculate an accurate location on the ground. Right 500 feet, then turn right. The whole thing depends on super accurate clocks. And when the engineers designed the system, they knew the satellites would be orbiting at nearly 7,000 miles an hour. The speed is enough to slow down their clocks by a tiny fraction of a second. The engineers have factored all the relativistic time differences into the system, which gives it impressive precision. If the clocks in the satellites are running at a different rate than the clocks down here on Earth, and you don't take that into account, you will get the wrong answer for where your car is. Drive point one mile to destination on left. The distortion of time is only one of the strange results of traveling close to the speed of light. On the bike track, Clifford Johnson continues to push the envelope as space begins doing odd things to him and his bicycle. Imagine I'm on my bike again going close to the speed of light. An observer looking at me would actually see, for example, that the length of my bike in the direction of motion and moving is getting shrunk. Actually, the bike is getting shorter. The effect is called length contraction, and together with time dilation, it is seen by a stationary observer while looking at someone traveling close to light speed. But Professor Johnson does get his own chance to witness light speed's weird effects. As his velocity closes in on light speed, his view of the world changes drastically. What I'm seeing as I move close to the speed of light, straight ahead, is that the shapes in front of me are getting quite distorted as compared to everyday life. Everything is being twisted into a sort of tunnel shape, and the colors are getting distorted in various ways. The color changes come from the Doppler effect and the shape distortions from a phenomenon known as aberration. The distortion is somewhat similar to what you would see if you were uh, driving through a rainstorm. If you were stationary, you would just see the rain coming straight down if you looked out of the side of the window. Whereas if you were moving through the storm, you would see that the rain appears to be slanting towards you as a result of your motion. And that's at the basis of that warping effect that you get as you're moving near the speed of light uh, towards objects in front of you. In reality, we don't have to travel near the speed of light to experience the distortions caused by motion through time and space. They are with us every minute of the day. 
All of the distortions that happen as a result of a finite speed of light still happen on an everyday basis, even in our everyday life, but the effects are so tiny that we can't perceive them. Still, light speed has its other quirks in the slow-moving world, quirks we perceive very well. The speed of light may be a constant, but only in the vacuum of space. When light moves through things like glass or fluids, it slows down appreciably. If it didn't, things like telescopes and human vision would be impossible. But what would happen if light slowed down much more? If the speed of light were zero? Light speed is 186,000 miles per second. It is a universal constant, but a constant with a catch. It travels at that speed only in a vacuum. Light changes its speed when it travels through different media. It travels more slowly through water. That's why you see refraction and bending and rippling of light uh, when you're underwater. Life as we know it would be very different if light didn't propagate at different speeds through different materials. For example, we wouldn't be able to see. Our eyes wouldn't work the same way. In a universe where light moved at the same speed through all materials, we would know little of the world around us, seeing only vague blobs of dark and light. That's because our eyes depend on biological lenses to focus images on our retinas. Just like lenses made of glass, they work because light slows down as it passes through them. Well, why is that? Because light is absorbed by the atoms of glass, and then they re-radiate it later. So there's a delay factor. Light hits an atom, the atom vibrates, and then sends a light package off. So there's a delay factor. The delay factor also causes light to bend when it hits glass shaped into a lens. Bent in just the right way, light can be focused, collected, and magnified. For astronomers studying the universe, nothing could be more important. Thank goodness light slows down when it goes through glass because that's the reason why we have telescopes. The reason why we have telescopes is because light bends going through glass and we can concentrate, concentrate large amounts of light to a single point and then that gives us the ability to see the marvels in the universe itself. Light travels through the glass lenses of telescopes at about 124,000 miles per second, two-thirds of its speed through a vacuum. But some scientists are looking at making use of light at far slower speeds. And then we have the uh, AOs over here. Yeah. They're pretty much all functioning now. At her lab on the campus of Harvard University, Dr. Lena Howe has taken slow light to the extreme by reducing light speed to zero. The speed of light, of course, is uh, incredibly high. I mean, nothing goes faster than light. And, uh, you know, the usual 186,000 miles per second. And we kind of thought, gee, that's awfully high. Let's, let's try to do something about it. So we have a detector right there. Howe and her team conducted their experiments in a complex laboratory filled with lasers, mirrors, prisms, and other exotic gear. It is a branch of physics where few have dared to tread. If you can start to change things so dramatically as, as taking this enormous light speed and then bring it down to bicycle speed, that then you're in a completely new regime of nature. You're able to now start to...